All right, today on Tree Talk, we are talking about a small tree, uh, Roost Typhina staghorn sumac. Called staghorn sumac because uh, these velvety, velvety cones um, of fruits, uh, they're very fuzzy, uh, like a uh, buck, um, like their, uh, their antlers are when they're covered in velvet. Um, so let's talk about the flower while I have this whole branch pulled down here and the leaves while they're real up close. Um, so compound leaves here on staghorn sumac, uh, they are opposite, or sorry, alternate uh, formation, but they have this big compound leaf. The rachis of the leaf and the young branches are super fuzzy and a little sticky. Um, important uh, for identification. Also, every leaflet is uh, pretty thin, pretty narrow, um, and uh, quite serrated. So the two trees that are very yeah, frequently mixed up with staghorn sumac are going to be uh, an invasive tree of heaven, Ilanthus altissima, um, and uh, walnut. Uh, Juglans nigra, black walnut, which we have done a tree tuck on. Uh, walnut leaves are a lot wider than the, the staghorn sumac leaves. Uh, also, usually have less leaflets. Look at these leaflets. There's, there can be uh, tons of leaflets on every individual leaf. Um, so the leaflets are really big, uh, or sorry, the leaves are really big. The leaflets are very narrow and serrated. Uh, tree of Heaven, I'll show some pictures of that. Um, uh, the new leaves are a little, have a purplish tint, which is a good identifying trait. And they are not serrated like this. They're kind of wavy on the margin, and then there, there are little sort of thumbs on the bottoms of the leaflets of Tree of Heaven uh, that have scent glands on them, and that is where the stinky kind of rotten peanut butter sort of smell of Tree of Heaven comes from, is that those scent glands on the leaves. So once you can um, tell the difference between those leaflets, you're, you're good to go. We'll look at other traits too, but again, let's, let's focus on this while I have this uh, branch down. It's kind of halfway up the hill here. Um, so now the fruits. Uh, these are droops. Every individual little um, little fruit in here is a droop. Uh, this uh, is an excellent, excellent, excellent species for pollinators um, when it is in bloom. And right now the fruits are developing. Um, it is already bloomed. When it's in bloom, the bees love it. Really important nectar source uh, for pollinators. Um, uh, but these fruits are very important sources of food for birds. Um, they'll eat the eat the fruit, disperse them all over the place, and um, they're actually edible for humans too. Um, and uh, they, to me, they're, they're kind of sour. They sort of taste, um, they remind me of runts, the candy runts. Um, sort of a little bit of sour, and I usually spit the, uh, the pit out, the seed out. Um, let me think here if there's anything else to discuss. Uh, probably not. Uh, I guess on the note of, oh, well, it's leaning down a little bit there. Um, on the note of the leaves, they have beautiful autumn color. I think this is a completely underrated species for autumn foliage. And usually they will um, start to change color a little bit sooner than other things around them. It's this bright orange color. So it's actually, I think, a really beautiful species that should be used more for landscaping. Um, but I very rarely see it for landscaping. You know, great for, great for wildlife, um, very uh, aesthetically pleasing. So let's get in now, look at the bark, um, because the bark is actually also a really good identifying trait between those other two species that you might mix it up for. Um, so we've looked at our black walnut before on tree talks. Um, they have, they develop this, these ver ridges and furrows, vertical texture very quickly. Um, and then tree of heaven is actually very, very smooth, um, but has little, uh, uh, they, they kind of look like uh, stretch marks in human skin, little smooth white kind of stripes down them. Obviously that's not what we have here. Uh, Roost typhina or staghorn sumac has these uh, kind of diamond shaped lenticels which are those uh, gas exchange pores. Um, yeah, just a little bit more space between the cells in here, which allows the, uh, the CO2 and the O2 to flow in and out uh, respectively. Um, so the bark is, uh, I think, quite distinctive. Um, something that will happen with the, uh, well, well, we'll get into it. We'll, let's get into the, the kind of form, the structure, the natural history of this species. Pretty much done there with the identification. Um, so uh, this is the only one here that we see. It's very rarely that you only see one staghorn sumac. Uh, when there's staghorn sumac around, there's usually uh, a bunch of them uh, because um, one seed will you know, fall on the ground, germinate, uh, and then a really immense uh, root system will develop underneath the ground. Um, and so you'll usually have a complete thicket uh, of sumac, but it's all clonal, um, all from that one seed. They will spread by root. Uh, they're very, very uh, prone to suckering. So it's like our aspens that we've talked about before, um, where if you get top damage, that will stimulate them to grow even more underground and to spread um, even more underground. 
Um, those root systems aren't incredibly deep and aren't incredibly uh, tough to, say, fire. Uh, I think fire actually sets a staghorn sumac back pretty easily. Um, but they're very common and very happy on drier sites. So this, you, I think a car just drove by a little bit ago. Uh, this is a sort of the uh, uh, um, spoil from a road, road construction. This is all, you know, very xeric soil. It's just loose rock here um, right next to the road. And that's where you'll see them, very dis disturbance-prone sites. So either old fields, you know, that are, uh, we were doing agriculture on them and we're not anymore and they're starting to go through succession, um, or these road banks, um, I've seen them on former strip mines. They, they're one of the first species to start to colonize uh, former strip mines. So from a conservation perspective, they can be very useful. Um, I have started to plant them a bunch in my conservation plantings because they're so good for wildlife and they grow very, very fast um, and they're pretty tough. Um, so uh, a really great species. Um, as far as uh, wood use, the, they don't get, I've seen some get a little bit bigger, you know, maybe two, three times bigger than this, you know, per stem. And again, they're spreading underneath the ground um, and, and usually in a whole thicket. I'll try to find uh, good photos of that. Um, but uh, so, you know, not a ton of wood that can be used here, but they are useful. People will use them for, for novelties and things. Um, little fun fact, uh, they fluoresce under a UV light, the wood. Um, so, and it's this very bright green color. It's this kind of R.L. Stein green color. It's really, really cool. Uh, I don't work wood, but if I did, I would maybe be creative and figure out something to do with that, uh, with a, a, a glowing, you know, under a black light, uh, wood. Um, there you have it. Great species for wildlife, for pollinators, for conservation. Love to see it around. Um, people treat it like a weed because it is very aggressive. Uh, they'll oftentimes really manage against it heavily. But a lot of that is actually because it's being misidentified as um, either walnut, which people treat like a weed too, or tree of heaven. Um, so uh, look at those leaves, uh, pay attention to the form, to the bark, to the leaves, uh, to the fruit. That's another giveaway. When you see those, those staghorns, um, you know uh, what you have here is, is staghorn sumac and not tree of heaven or anything else. But there you have it. Uh, staghorn sumac, Rus typhina, one of our several Rus species, um, uh, sumac species here in our eastern forests.